Well, around sixth grade, I started getting uh, homosexual attraction and started feeling the, the condemnation, the shame, without even anyone really saying anything. It's just kind of understood in the church that it's, it's not acceptable, it's not good, it's not right. Nathaniel Flock kept his feelings a secret. At what point did you just decide, I have to come out of the closet? I started reaching out to people online, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a safe place because they didn't know what I really looked like. I could go into forums, I could be anybody I wanted to be, and there was that secrecy. And just to find out if there are other people like me, freshman year in high school, I started telling a few people, some of the people that I was closest to. Mm -hmm. How did your family take all of this? I told my mom by taking her out to a gay restaurant in Atlanta, which probably was really unfair for her because I was, I was doing it because I wanted her on my territory, mm -hmm. you know. What was her immediate reaction? She was pretty shocked. I also don't take her out to dinner a whole lot, so she was expecting something, I think, when I uh, when I asked her to go to a dinner with me and a friend, just broke the ice, said I just wanted you to come down here because I wanted you to know that I'm gay and this is just who I am and this is one of my favorite restaurants and there you go, let's eat. <laughs> Over the next three years, Nathaniel became involved in the gay pride movement and the dance music scene. How did you line up your convictions? On the one hand, you're raised in a Christian home, but you're also, you know, thinking it's, it is okay to live this gay lifestyle. How did that line up for you? I was longing for something else. The church hadn't satisfied me. I was feeling all these new feelings. I didn't know how to respond. And so by acting out of these, the convictions kind of went to the back burner and this exciting new life, which felt like who I really was, right. was now taking precedence. He became a popular DJ for clubs and parties. He also got sucked into using drugs. Soon, DJing alone couldn't support his drug habit. I had this, this new power and this new acceptance, but I actually got into selling myself for money and uh, male prostitution to make extra money. And it wasn't something that I, that I wanted to. Men would come up to me and offer me money. And when they hand you a fat check, you know, I was like, I'd be an idiot to not take this. In my mind, it wasn't prostitution. It was. I'm just making some extra money and having fun while I'm doing it. Nathaniel estimates having been with over 200 partners. He took me to a park where he did a lot of his cruising, looking around for random sex partners. So I used to rollerblade up and down here looking for hookups and, and uh, just different men who are also cruising around looking for hookups. And, and so it's, it's kind of known for that when, I mean, even some married men may take, you know, their lunch break here and just kind of look for something and what's it feel like being back uh it's kind of disturbing just being around here seeing some of the people i can i can look at them and see in their eyes and their body language and what they're doing and i'm i've been there yeah. you know i've done that and yeah. I, so i'm able to pick up on what they're doing and why they're here and it's just it's depressing after years of drugs and partying the excitement of the club scene lost its luster Everyone tries to act happy because they're all caught in this cycle and they, they feel they can't get out. So we have to make ourselves happy to, to, to compensate. And uh, I just found most of the men were very unhappy. They go from lover to lover to lover because they're looking for that one man to complete them. He felt that God was trying to draw him away, but the lifestyle had a deadly grip on him. There's that grieving, that tension in my heart because I knew God was still trying to call me back. And so I'd go into the seasons of celibacy. I would make a vow of celibacy and sure enough as soon as I would make that vow of celibacy there would be men knocking on my door. I was addicted to drugs, addicted to sex. I could not get out of the cycle. That is until one night when Nathaniel had a remarkable nightmare. He was drowning as a huge snake wrapped itself around his body. But far off he saw a wall with a cross. As long as I could keep my eye on the cross, I could touch, I could get close enough to it. So I finally touched it, and as soon as I did, for the first time ever in my, my sleep life, I could remember that there's a God and I can pray to Him. And as soon as I said, Jesus, save me, the water and the snake disappeared. And I woke up, and when I woke up, it was like these scales had fallen off my eyes. Like literally, a veil had been lifted, and now I was seeing the world right side up. That morning, God's voice was so loud and clear, and he was saying, leave the guy you're with, 
you need to get you need to call your parents tell them everything you need to repent to them you need to get right you need to move back up there get plugged into their church i mean i'm i'm weeping and i'm writing all of these things down his voice is so clear nathaniel asked jesus to forgive and save him he returned home to live with his parents began attending church and growing in his relationship with god he quit the drugs yet his homosexual feelings didn't go away i remember the pastor was preaching on about following god and that requires you to leave things behind and you have to keep moving if you're going to follow god and i felt the lord pressing so hard into my heart you have to forsake homosexuality you have to denounce this and so i prayed a really scary prayer that night it was one of the scariest prayers i've ever prayed and i i released it i surrendered it to the lord and i said I want what you want for me and if being with a woman is your best for me then I say yes to that. I I denounce and I renounce my my agreement with this as who I am. This that I want to be who you want me to be. And it wasn't even a week later. I just recently looked at my journal. It wasn't even a week later and I was my heart was already turning and all of a sudden I was wanting a wife and I was wanting children and it burned in me for about 4 or 5 months. It was all I could think about. The day came when Nathaniel saw Tiffany, a beautiful girl at church. He wanted to ask her out. Were and you it, nervous? I was nervous and it was a faith journey because my feelings hadn't caught up to my faith and what God was telling me to do. I was I was I felt out of my element, you know. And uh but I knew that God had chosen her for I I was so certain of it. And so uh he he gave us this amazing day where uh I asked her if, if she felt the same way if we can continue in in more than just friends and uh cuz I don't like the term dating. Yeah. Uh, I consider courtship important and her dad and asked her dad if I could court his daughter. Nathaniel and Tiffany courted for 7 months. They saved their first kiss for their wedding day. You may now kiss your bride. <laughs> <laughs> so what is life like for you now? 5 years ago, if you had told me I would be where I am right now, I would have laughed at you. But here we are. We're I I'm married. I have a baby on the way. Um I'm full-time missionary to House of Prayer with an amazing family and community I'm plugged into. I couldn't ask for ask for anything else right now. The Lord drew me away with his love and showed me that he was someone that I could trust, that I could follow. He waited for me and and didn't didn't let me go. He kept reaching for me. and waiting for me to come back to him i'm most thankful for his patience with me and his mercy